Welcome to Beer and Iron's Hot Beer Brine Template Recipe. Brining meat takes planning. It takes preparation. And like anything in our world, good things come to those who get off their tush and make things happen. I create my brines in what most consider to be a small batch, but I get creative in delivering that small batch of brine to a large cut of meat. My go-to pot is this little Asian sauce pot. I rescued this little pot from a recycle pile. It was pocked and rusty. Now we use it for everything from making brines to sauces to cooking rice. I don't bash those Asian made pieces, no sir, no ma'am. We cook with them. Remember this ratio. 1 tablespoon of salt to 12 ounces of liquid, and the liquid we're going to be using is beer. We're going to make a 36 ounce batch of brine, and 3 12 ounce beers will do the trick. Now, I love craft beer. I enjoy pairing those craft beers with meals I enjoy. The truth with beer pairing is this. Beers that pair well with certain foods are not always good choices for brining with those foods. Start your brining journey with a nice, easy lager that is usually considered an easy drinker. Modelo, Corona, Dos Equis, and even your Bubba's Budweiser or Coors Light work great. Get the brining down first, and then experiment with different beers. Here we go. Step number one, pour 24 ounces of beer into your sauce pot. Step number two, use a nice coarse ground salt. A kosher salt is preferred, and from now on, use the same salt each and every time to remain consistent with your brines. Not all salt has the same saltiness. We're gonna add three tablespoons of salt to those 24 ounces of beer in that pot, but watch that foam. It's gonna head up. Why does it head up, you ask? Well, I explain that awesomeness on the website. Check it out. Step number three, light the fire under your pot and get that beer to simmer it. A medium to a medium low heat works just fine. While that beer is simmering, go ahead and get our herbs ready. This video is really not a recipe. It is a how-to to create your own brine and your own variations. It's a template. I'm just going to use these particular herbs for this video to demonstrate how and when you add your ingredients. Sage, garlic, thyme, and rosemary work well with chicken. You can use dry herbs if you like. Just don't add as much dry herbs as you would if you were adding fresh herbs. Brining works by the action of the salt. Well, there's a little bit more to it, and I go into depth on the webpage, but you remember junior high science class, right? Osmosis. Ringing any bells? The brine will have a higher salt concentration than the meat will have. Because of the pressure of the salty brine, the salt will be seeking to find balance and it'll want to migrate into the depths of that meat to find more ring. Now that's simplistic speaking there, but you get the gist. And with that movement, that salt will take a few piggybacking beer and infused herb molecules along with it into the depths of that meat. Brining is like salting any meal. Take, for example, the pot of stew without any salt at all. It'll taste good, yeah, maybe, I guess. Then consider the teaspoon of salt. What if you were just to eat the salt all by itself? It would be overwhelming. You get the same salt in that pot of stew, right? But it doesn't overwhelm. It actually creates a stew with more flavor, or at least the sensation of more flavor. It makes it delicious. Brining is similar. The salt will infuse deep into the meat, and the flavors of the brine will follow. No, the meat's not going to taste as salty as that brine, nowhere near. Nor will it taste like beer. The beer, the salt, and the other ingredients in our brine will enhance the flavor of the meat we're eating. Our chicken's going to taste just like chicken, and the flavors of the brine will enhance that chicken's flavor and the texture. Remember that the liquid will follow the salt, and the salt in the meat will hold on to our moisture, and that means more tender and juicier meat. You don't have to chop up your ingredients this way. I do so the flavors infuse a little bit better. Step number five. Now that the brine has been heated and the salt has dissolved, add the additions to the brine. Whatever additions you're wanting to add to whatever meal you're creating, go ahead and stir things up a bit. 
Step 6. Let things simmer for a while. If you're just adding salt, there's no need to simmer. Once the salt is dissolved, you can just use the brine once it's cooled down. But this is why I use the cold method to create a brine if I'm not adding anything like herbs or garlic or anything else to my brine. If it's just beer and salt, I'm using the cold method. I want the simmering during the cooking of this brine to really bring out the flavors and the additions I'm adding to my brine. Almost like setting a bag of tea in some water and letting that tea infuse into that water. We're going to let those herbs and that garlic infuse into that brine. That's why it seemed I added so much of those herbs and garlic. I needed those flavors to dissolve and become part of that brine. I needed those molecules to break off those herbs and that garlic. Molecules, chemistry, right? You remember? Step 7. After the brine has been simmering a bit, we need to prepare for cooling it down. I use a large Pyrex container to transfer everything into to let the brine cool down good. I expedite the cooling process by adding that last 12 ounce bit of beer to that Pyrex first and then I add that hot brine to that container. It's still going to be hot. You see here that brine is at 130 degrees and it'll definitely cook that meat if you start brining it right now. We put ours in the refrigerator with something underneath that brine to keep the hot brine from coming in contact with the refrigerator's glass shelves. Now about an hour or two later we're ready to start brining. We're getting to step number eight. Remove that brine from the refrigerator. You see those herbs and that garlic have sunk to the bottom. That means they're brine soaked and they've given up a lot of their flavor to that brine. Now we're going to put everything together. I use a large bowl. I'm going to put a two and a half gallon zipper bag in that bowl. Place a paper towel in the bottom of that bowl to catch any spillage and then set that two and a half gallon zipper bag on top of that paper towel. I think the zipper bag is probably an important part of this process. That's how I get away with only creating 32 ounces of brine. We need to keep that meat submerged in that brine. Step 9. Place the meat into the zipper bag and then simply just pour that brine over that meat. Chickens have a cavity space and I fill that first. Roast, well they don't have a hole in the middle and I just set that roast in there and pour that brine over that roast. I leave the herbs in my brine, I don't fish them out, but you can strain those herbs and garlic out if you like. Step 10. Zip up that zipper bag, but be sure to get all the air out of that bag before cinching it up closed. Now make a horseshoe turn at the top of that bag and secure it with that chip clip. This will keep that bag from bending and twisting in that refrigerator and keep that brine from leaking out all over the place. This chicken will brine for a few days and every once in a while we'll go in and move things about, move that chicken around in that brine by swishing that bag left and right. That way the brine stays turned up and the chicken is moved to allow the brine to infuse completely. And as far as the brining goes, that's it. All you have to do now is place the whole package in the refrigerator for a few days and you're good to go. But I don't want to leave you hanging. Let you and I have a bit of culinary closure and see how this chicken turns out. Let's cook. Now if you want a step-by-step -step guide on a simple roasted beer brine whole chicken, follow the link in the description to that video. And I hope you all enjoyed this beer and iron recipe. My name is Sule, and I love to share the magic of my black pots and pans. If you enjoyed this recipe and want to keep up with the going-ons here at BeerAndIron.com, be sure to click that little thumb and hit that little subscribe button, and don't forget that little dinner bell. This is a basic recipe here on BeerAndIron.com, and it'll be referenced by many other recipes here on this website. Brining is a process we use in so many of our recipes. This video goes hand in hand with the article on BeerAndIron.com. I hope you enjoyed this. You're going to let me know how it turned out, right? We'll see you next time here on BeerAndIron.com.